Hi everyone, it's Jasmine. On today's episode of The Slam Project, I'm going to be going over the cases of four unidentified Jane and John Doe's. And before we get into it, I just want to remind you that the artist composites are not supposed to be an exact likeliness, but they should trigger your memory if you knew the person in real life. And if you want to hear more videos on missing and murdered Indigenous people, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Now let's get right into it. Northern Cheyenne John Doe, name is number UP12251, Doe Network 849UMMT. In September 2003, the remains of a male were found several miles east of Lame Deer, Montana on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. No estimated age was given, only described as being young. Hair color, height, and weight also were not available because only a skull and a femur bone were found. This is the only information online for this John Doe. It also does not say if DNA is available, but the facial reconstructions were done at an FBI lab in Washington, D.C., so it is possible DNA is on file. Rebel Ray, name is number UP4062, Doe Network 55UMTX. On October 3, 1988, Human remains of a man were found about six miles east of Georgetown, Texas. A man had called police to report that his dog had brought back a human skull to their house. A search in the area found more bones and clothing near Riverside Mobile Home Park. Also near the body was a faded red baseball cap with a red rebel flag. This is how John Doe received his name. Janet Franson is a retired homicide detective, and she worked on this case. She was the one who named him Rebel Ray. After retirement, Janet has dedicated her life to the missing and murdered Indigenous peoples epidemic. She started a Facebook page called Lost and Missing in Indian Country. If you go to the page and click on Photos, you will be able to see missing and unidentified people organized by state. Janet also has a Facebook page for Rebel Ray. I will link them both in the description box. Her credentials allow her the ability to add people to NamUs, so if you need help with this, she can assist you. Examination of the bones indicated that his nose had been previously broken and that his arms appeared to be very muscular. He is estimated to be between 25 to 40 years old, between 5 foot 2 and 5 foot 5 inches tall, average build, had dark hair that was graying, and had an abscessed tooth. They thought time of death was 6 to 12 months prior. Cause of death was listed as undetermined. Authorities believe that Rebel Ray was either Caucasian, Hispanic, or Native American. In early 2019, Rebel Ray's case was picked up by the DNA Doe Project. After a couple failed extractions due to the age of the bones, they were finally able to obtain the correct amount of DNA for forensic genetic genealogy. His genetic report indicated that he was 68% Native American. However, Hispanic and Native American DNA are both intertwined because they are both indigenous to North America. So I guess it could be possible that Ray could be of Hispanic origin, but his DNA report also lists Siberian. So my guess is that he is Native American. Janet believes this as well and thinks that he is most likely Cherokee. The original sketch by Karen Taylor depicts a Native American nose. In October 2019, an updated sketch was produced by Natalie Murray using the latest computer technology. Early interviews in the case said that Rebel Ray may have worked at the mobile home park as a handyman or may have sold marijuana there. It was also said that he may have been an undocumented immigrant. Weber Falls Jane Doe, name is number UP9183, race is listed as uncertain. 
Doe Network number 617-UF-OK. A motorist in Weber Falls, Oklahoma, was driving one half mile west of Ross Road and near Interstate 40 when they discovered the body of a female on April 27, 2006. She was in a ditch along a gravel road. She was between 20 to 40 years old, 5 foot 3 and 150 pounds. She had brown hair with reddish tint that was 4 to 6 inches long. Her ears were double pierced but she was not wearing any earrings. She had on a white long sleeve turtleneck, black jogging pants with two stripes down the legs, yellow capris and did not have on any shoes. There also was a scar on her shin that required stitches when the injury happened. When the motorist discovered her body, she was clutching a bloody towel and there was another bloody towel besides her. And there was a lot of vaginal bleeding. It was determined that the deceased was in her first trimester of pregnancy. She most likely either had a miscarriage or suffered from a botched home abortion. NamUs lists first trimester abortion in their circumstance notes. Authorities concluded that there were no injuries to her body, no sexual assault, or any sign of a struggle. They think she might have been disposed of around midnight. Her fingerprints and DNA were ran and there were no hits. It is reported that her race is either Native American, Hispanic, or Asian. There was even speculation that she was in the country illegally. There was a Facebook post about this Jane Doe and someone posted a picture of her headstone and said that she was buried in their family cemetery. A man named Gene Wallace commented on the post and said he was the county commissioner at the time she was found. He said that Jane Doe was well dressed, had nice hair, had manicured fingernails, and was gently placed on the ground. They also ran several media articles seeking out anybody who may have known her. A very nice person contacted him and offered to pay for her funeral and burial. Jean also said that it was pretty obvious to everyone that she bled to death, but the autopsy never determined a cause of death. He also added that she had a smallpox vaccination scar, which leads him to believe she is American. Weber Falls Jane Doe was laid to rest in New Hope Cemetery on August 19, 2006. Her headstone reads, Found in forever's peaceful sleep, known only to God, loved by strangers. Helen Doe also known as Cowlitz County Jane Doe, name is number UP10449, Doe Network, 919UFWA. On May 14, 1991, two semi-trucks collided near Kalama, Washington on Interstate 5. 26-year-old Lester Harville was driving the semi that caused the crash. The truck was engulfed in flames in efforts to save him and the passenger were unsuccessful. Both died in the crash. His passenger was Helen Doe. She is estimated to be between 20 to 29 years old, was between 5 feet and 5 feet 4 inches tall, and about 115 pounds. She had high cheekbones and had a severe case of scoliosis. It is said that she had bad teeth and had a gap in her front bottom teeth. As a result of the fire, her race, hair, and eye color are unknown, but it is believed she is Native American. Her fingerprints were also charred and her belongings were destroyed. Investigators checked area truck stops and spotted Helen Doe on surveillance tape getting into the semi. A witness from the truck stop was able to give a detailed description of her. At the time of the crash, she was wearing a black cowboy vest that had gray on top and possibly pink color. She was dark complected, had a long dark ponytail, and was wearing a feather earring. 
Lester was known to pick up hitchhikers as he drove his routes. Investigators tracked his movements by collecting fuel receipts. Lester left Missouri on May 7, 1991. He drove through Kansas, Colorado, Utah, Idaho, and Oregon before arriving in Washington on May 14, 1991. He could have picked up Helen Doe anywhere between Missouri and the truck stop in Tacoma. After dropping off his load, the pair were headed to Portland, Oregon. In January 2014, Helen Doe was exhumed for DNA and to create a composite sketch. Her remains are now located at the Cowlitz County Coroner's Office. If you would like to help identify Jane and John Doe's, you can upload your raw DNA file from 23andMe, Ancestry, or any other home DNA kit to GEDmatch or DNASolves.com. You will have to click the opt-in button to allow law enforcement to check your profile for possible matches. Native Americans are very underrepresented in the DNA databanks. So even though DNA profiles for Native Americans can be obtained for genetic genealogy, it might take a long time to see a match because there is nothing to compare it to. I took a 23andMe test for fun. I just wanted to see what my origins were. Well, last year I got a relative match and it was a first cousin. He is my aunt's son and was adopted out. He was looking for her and his other siblings. He was able to be reunited with them because I decided to take a DNA test at home for fun. So you never know if you will find a family member or solve a cold case. I highly recommend that if you are Native American or First Nations, that you please take a test and upload to GEDmatch and DNA Solves. And that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also share this video so that we could get these faces in front of the right people that might recognize them. And I will see you in the next video.